Okay, thanks. I want to get a show of hands. How many people have, have actually heard of Lauterbach before? Okay, quite a few. I expected to see about, about half. For the rest of you, I'm going to give a little bit of background of Lauterbach, where we've been, the fact that we've been invested in debug and RISC-V from, in essence, the beginning. I'm also going to talk about our tools. I'm going to give you an overview, just some of the tools, some of the environments that you'll see our tools in, because it's, as you're finding out, embedded is getting very complex. And finally, uh, I'm going to show you some slides. I didn't think it would be very appropriate for me to bring a bunch of things in here and try to show you things live. Uh, I've been in code reviews where we scroll up and down the code, and I'm like, I'm getting seasick. So let's talk about our history. So Lauterbach is 45 years old. Uh, it was founded by Lothar Lauterbach in 79. And our first product was Trace 80. Uh, basically, it was an in-circuit emulator for the Z80. Since then, we've grown to be 130 plus engineers, um, people all over the world, but primarily we're focused in our headquarters is in Munich, Germany. We've been invested with Andes for quite some time, 15 year long partnership. Uh, we started out with the Andes Star cores, and now we're with the Andes cores, which are the Risk V. And you can see the picture here. Here's uh, Dr. Sue shaking hands and giving an award to Stefan Lauterbach, which is Lothar's brother, so he's the co-founder, basically giving us a Partner of the Year award. So um, we're very proud about that. We've, we've been working with the industry for a long time. My personal belief is that engineering and development is a team effort. Uh, if you try to do something by yourself, you're going to spend a lot of time and a lot of money. And so you need to be working with other experts. And so we're very, very proud of this. And we've been working with RISC-V since the beginning. Uh, we have been part of the RISC-V Foundation since its inception. Uh, our first debugger for RISC-V was introduced in November of 2017. We've been involved in the debug definition, and certainly uh, the big thing that we're working on now is trying to get trace, uh, the trace working groups, get those specifications finalized and something that's available for everyone. Uh, we've been working on both the N-trace and the E-trace definitions. When you look at the contributors, you'll see several Lauterbach employees there. And so we're very invested trying to make sure that works well. Now, so German engineers are very conservative. I, 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 it was mentioned I came from Intel. I was a board lead. I tend to be a little more aggressive. It'll work. Uh, the Germans like to say, when we get it ratified, the trace specifications will be there the next day. Uh, I've been demoing N-Trace for quite some time, a um, couple years actually, so we do have support. What does that mean for you? So you remember that Trace 80, we still support the Z80. Um, I liked looking at that chart from Green Hills because, yes, we have an amazing number of cores. As an FAE, every once in a while I have somebody come up and say, I need help with my 68K. And I'm like, wow, that's amazing. I, let me figure out how that works. But for you, if you have an SOC that's very complex, we can work in not only any cores that you may, any architectures you may have in there, but if you have a mix, we work well in that environment as well. We support both debug, which is the basics, and trace. And finally, we were talking about uh, RTOS in the last presentation. We have a tremendous number of RTOSs that we support. So if you're doing bare metal, we can do that. We can support free RTOS, Zephyr, all the way up to Linux and hypervisors. So we go the gamut. We also help people with certification. So we have some customers that obviously have that aerospace and safety critical need. And so we have tools, we can help you get through that process. 
And then we have services. So I'm the FAE. So if you're on the West Coast, you have help. You'll get access to me. You'll get access to the developers in Germany and my colleagues in Tunisia. And we'll help you get through your problems. That's local. So if you're on the East Coast, we have someone else. And so we have FAEs all over the world that can be in your same time zone. And this is the last point on here is we're back to being a partner. So there are a lot of things that our tools can do. We have a lot of partners in the communities that, that build on Lauterbach. And of course, we build on uh, the compilers and OSs that other people produce and the SOCs that you design. So we work um, very much trying to be that partner in your ecosystem to make sure things work well. And this is a slide that really impacts you. This is the time to market slide. So with our tools, we can help you from the very beginning. So we can um, hook up to QEMU. We can start debugging then and there. Scripts that you develop there can be used on your RTL. It can be used in any of your pre-silicon uh, efforts. Once you get silicon back and you get into post-silicon verification or validation, we can help you with that as well. And it should be the same scripts if you design them well. Once you get past that, we can help you flash parts, start to deploy um, in manufacturing. Even once it gets out in the field, we support um, the ability to do that closed chassis debug. And then finally, sustaining. And back to that concept of helping someone who has an ancient 68K processor that they need help, we're there. So right now, because RISC-V is still uh, maturing and growing, uh, a lot of my customers that I talk to are still in that SOC design phase. We're starting to get people that come out and are actually starting to use it. Um, some people are starting to use Trace as well. So we're kind of early just because of the maturity of the architecture. So here are our products that we have. So we have our microtrace, which is our uh, cost-effective unit. Uh, it has some limitations because of it being cost-effective. It only supports the RV32 architectures, um, but it does give you trace. So if you hook it up, uh, you can get trace back to that conservative nature. Well, we won't tell you that it has trace today, but the day that uh, N-Trace is validated or approved, uh, we'll support it the next day. Right next to it, over on the uh, right-hand side, you have the, um, our main debugger. So this is our X50. It's a much more powerful unit. Uh, I like to describe it as the little computer that sits on your desk. This is where the actual debug happens. The debugger is in there. It's a little microcomputer in there. Uh, analyzing what's going on and making sure it's very fast and efficient. So as mentioned, I came from Intel. One of the things I designed there was the debugger for Intel. And it's very similar architecture that to make things fast, you want the processing as close to the core as possible. So this will support our RISC-V. It'll support the 32 or 64-bit. You can add other cores. So we have customers that will have ARM and RISC-V or RISC-V and Extensa or any combination. And you can debug it with this one unit. So just to give you an idea of what some of those architectures can look like, this is a pure RISC-V solution. Very easy to hook up and support. From, from my side, it's kind of fun. Uh, you just have JTAG and you hook up to the cores. It's very easy. If you have a mixed environment where you have RISC-V and uh, ARM using CoreSight, it's a little more complicated, but you now have a situation where you can debug your RISC-V and your ARM and all the other features that you get with the CoreSight environment. And let's bring up Tessent. If you have a Tessent-based solution, we can support that as well. So those are our debug solutions. Now this is Trace, and Trace is a little more interesting. So I, I do some uh, uh, talks at, uh, college, uh, at a college for um, graduate students, and I say pins are very expensive, and they don't quite get it. 
And if you don't quite get it, that's fine. You can talk to us later. We have tray solutions that go from no pins, in other words, our on-chip tray solutions, all the way to our very high-end serial trace. And that works out well if you have a PCI interface, we can hook up to that and we can get trace and you don't have to make any changes to your board. Uh, in between, we have our parallel trace, uh, which is a little more traditional. So again, this is gonna be the R chart of let's look at the different combinations of things that we support. So this would be mixed Tessent and Corsite. Um, this would be a pure uh, Tessent or an E-trace type of solution. And then finally, uh, we have our N-trace solutions where um, we go through and this is more of a consistent environment uh, as far as just the pure end trace. So I now have some slides I'm gonna go through. I'm just gonna show you the debug environment. Uh, the screens are huge, so you probably can see it. I was a little bit concerned it would be tiny, but these are still gonna be an eye chart. So I've been doing debug for 30 years, and what I've found is sometimes the details are very important, but as mentioned earlier, you need to be able to step back and abstract and, and see things the big picture. Um, this would be the little picture where literally you're looking at the instructions that were executed. Um, very detailed view. This assumes you kind of know where the bug is and you want to zoom right in. You can control it a little bit, what information is there, but what we find is that customers tend to like this view a little better. This is what we call the chart view. You, and I tell people this is like a sideways sequence diagram. You get to see what functions have called what and what it looks like on a timeline. So you can see what your system actually has done over time. Now the thing that's kind of cool about this is that because there's time in here, you can make some measurements. So now you can see what is your code doing and measure that timing. So you can see I dropped a cursor I put another uh, reference point and I can see that there's one millisecond between these uh, task increment ticks. So great way to measure, but it's perhaps not the most accurate way. So we have all this information, we can put it together and do some statistical analysis on it and we can start to build little uh, bar charts or bell diagrams that show you what actually is the timing and according to this, you can see that our timing isn't exactly one milliseconds. It's actually a little more, and sometimes it's a lot less. Um, so in this case, you're seeing at the top, we have uh, 990 microseconds is actually what our uh, timer tick is being called. So you might want to look at some parameters and adjust those if that's important to you. Sure? You talking about the chart diagram? Uh, this one came from a single thread, so it is uh, one threaded. I don't know if I can do that in two threads. That's, I've never done that. So talk to me afterwards and we can, we can talk about it a little bit. Okay, so it's back to that big picture. So this actually is where we group things together. You can see our application, which is listed as other, and then we have the RTOS running. And we see a little bobble right here that it's like, okay, what is actually going on here? Well, we can zoom in, bring in the bigger picture, and we can tie those two charts together. So if you zoom in and out on one, it will zoom in and out on the other, which makes it pretty easy. You drop a cursor and then you can just go straight down and you can say, what is happening? There's a little blob there. And then you go across and you say, oh, we have task removed from list. Um, and so we can see that when we remove tasks, it actually impacts the timing a little bit. So these are ways that you can see what's happening in the system. If you really wanna get into some detail, we can do some timing analysis and measurement in our system. Um, this very much is an eye chart. There's a lot of detail and there's about 30 pages of documentation behind it telling you what all these numbers mean. Uh, the big thing is you can start looking for specific functions and you can look at those and see what is the timing that you're spending in those functions. Um, and because it is a static, or excuse me, a dynamic analyzer, 
you can actually look for things like, um, in this case, we have a, a reentrant function or um, recursive function. So this is function 13 that calls itself, and we know it calls itself um, four times or three times. Okay, we talked about safety critical, and part of that is doing code coverage. So you can see, what has my code been doing? Has my testing, my tests that I've been writing, are they actually fruitful? Am I testing what I think I wanna test? Um, in this case, you have a list view. You can see your code. Um, we will highlight and tag your code, showing you, did you get the coverage that you were expecting? And if you were trying to test line 187, you're not getting there because you can see it was never done. Finally, um, one of the things I want to show is uh, what we call our um, a CTS system. So most debuggers, most trace, you get to see what was go happening and just go forward in time. CTS allows you to debug backwards. So most debuggers, you step, and step forward is what that means. Uh, you turn on CTS, it analyzes the trace, it uses our instruction set simulator to know uh, what's happening, and you can actually step backwards in time. You can see all the variables changing. You can uh, go back many functions, see what's happening, find where that root of that bug is, and then um, kind of hidden on here is a button called takeover. So you get to where you think that bug is, and you can click that takeover button, and what will happen is Trace32 will write back the system as it knows it at that point in time, and then you can start debugging from that point. So you don't need to know exactly where the bug is, you need to get in the right range and then go backwards to that point and see it. Okay, so this was a big splatter in 15 minutes, uh, basically talking about the trace and the features that we have. Um, we have a day long class where we talk about trace. When I do demos, they're an hour long, and it's always a constant thing. But got a couple minutes for questions, if you have any. Uh, we're about to hit a break, so we're located right next to the food table, so stop on by if you have any burning questions, um, and we can, we can talk about your problems.